Okay, guys. What we're looking at is the uh, the backside inside of the apron for the Pratt and Whitney Model B 12 by 30 lathe. Okay. This is the clutch for the dial. Um, moving the saddle left and right. So on the other side of this is the hand wheel and in the center of that hand wheel is a star knob like this, which you turn Oh, you turn clockwise to engage the clutch, counterclockwise to release it. Okay, same principle here. This is the powered cross feed. So that's going from operator to the rear of the lathe across the bedways. So I've removed this clutch knob, we'll call a star knob for now on, from the front side of the apron. And we'll, let's back up a little bit. So if your power cross feed does not work, if it is, I can't imagine it being stuck on the engaged position. but anything's possible. This is going to be your problem. Okay, this little nub here sticks out of the back of the apron after the cover is on, as well as this. So, if I turn this, now this would normally be What direction am I going if I'm on the other side? I'm turning it that way. That is clockwise. So this would be this would be engaging this this clutch. The other direction would be relieving it. So this goes all the way through. The star knob goes right there. If you're having a locked up clutch and this is froze up it needs to be so you just need to get that off get this thing turning okay so let's pull that off that is keyed now when I first received my lathe the cross feed worked you can see one of my first videos where I'm operating the cross feed and the longitude feed simultaneously. And I guess there could be a situation for that. Okay, so I'm not sure where we left off. So let's get this back on here and talk about my problem. Okay. I, when I first purchased the machine, um, both systems were working. Both clutches were working. Um, at some point, I either over-tightened this or something, whatever. Just enough swarth was in there that it jammed up. And uh, I ended up here. Cleaned everything up. And power cross feed works. Now, it does have an issue. And some would say not to bother with it. And others would say, go ahead and just get it right. So I'm going to go over here to the one that does work. Let me, uh, well, they don't work. I want to be focused down here. Okay, now I'm going to be turning the knob down here. So when I'm turning this thing, this cone here is being sucked down. When I turn the other way, which is counterclockwise, this raises up. So it's being raised up by the rod and the threads in the rod are engaged, whatever, and it's magic. So the point I'm making here is there's a lot of travel there. Okay, now when I engage this one, I don't have as much travel. And when I disengage it, it doesn't always want to let go. Um, you know, you got to kind of 
go past Titan and loosen it one time and it'll, it'll finally release it. So not only am I not getting full travel, um, I'm not getting full travel in either, either direction, apparently. So what I believe the answer to this problem is going to be the setting the height of this collar. So I'm thinking um, there's a wire tie on there, a wire keeper. So what I'm thinking is um, cut that wire, back this thing off maybe one turn, and then test it. And there's probably a way to think and extrapolate what direction I need to move it in to achieve the result I desire. And sometimes you just, uh, well, I'll, I'll try to figure that out and then we'll test it by, by practicing it. Another issue I have is I'm not getting real good oil delivery to the top of the apron. Okay, I'm going to have to take a chance here to light the screen up. It's always a chance I switch it over to photo. So we see this little line here, there's a little line here. There's also a little line down here. And then you can see it. Let's see if I have something to point with. Okay, it comes in here, here, and then runs in down in here. You can see where these two run in. In fact, you could probably see where those are connected. I'm just guessing you can see in there. Um, I don't know what you just saw. So, so this is the line over here that I'm getting less than uh, favorable results. And when I, you know, I flip these lines here, I can feel a little resistance where they're, you know, where they're connected. And when I move this one down here, it seems to have a lot more play in it. Okay. There's also the issue of this gear here. And that gear here is, travels. This pen goes through it. And this uh, has a, a button on it. You can push it. You can lock that key, or you can unlock that key. So that'll give you the the ability to uh, unlock the wheel so it doesn't spin while the travel while the, while the way the carriage is apron is traveling. So it's pretty pretty ingenious little keyway there. I wish I knew how to operate it. Now it won't come undone. Well, <laughs> it was working. It will work again. So um, there's two issues here. Then there's the there's the third oil line down here, and one possibility about this oil line is this gear here, which I just described, until that shaft is in there, it just kind of floats there. So it's possible that this gear, not likely, has uh, damaged that little piece of tubing. But um, I think not. And as unlikely as it seems that that tube came undone, I think that's uh, where the money's at, where my money would be betting. Um, it is not clogged. I, I ran air through those. Um, well, I can't say that for sure. I have ran air through it. And, um, didn't seem to be clogged. Okay, here's the half nut. No. Well, you pick this thing up, that'll just fall out. So beware of that if you're taking this apart. Okay, other than um, making this adjustment on this clutch and looking at that line, that's about all we can do to the apron. Now, this has seen better days. This journal down here should be Oh, probably five ten thousandths larger than it is. I had to turn that down just to clean it up. That used to sticks out the front. You know, I've had vice grips on it and this and that and trying to free this thing up you know, before I had this thing off the machine. Uh, and it's not perfectly straight, but it's running pretty true. So I think that adjustment is one place I need to go. And I don't know, part of the reassembly last time, because I suspected that um, I didn't have the screw all the way down flush because I was afraid it was going to be locked up when I got it all back together. So it may be all I need to do is put this down all the way tight and reinstall it. And that's going to be the first thing that I do. So that leaves me with the oil lines. And obviously the oil pump. And we'll need to flip this thing over to see all that. Okay, here we are on the front side of the apron. So I... Uh, I pulled this star knob off, which um, released the whole mechanism. And this kind of further confirms to me that this is the actual adjustment for the, uh, for the travel. Now, which way goes which, I haven't figured that out yet. But um, in that example of that rod, um, where's the other one at? 
So this one is supposed to look like that one. You see, you got a, a um, this. Uh, you see the difference. There's a there's a difference in diameter here at the end, and that is that diameter is uh, what the star registers on. What that you know it keeps it from wobbling around left and right. And I've lost that due to call it excessive machining uh, and trying to get this one right or cleaned up and straightened anyway. So now this thing is painted shut now. I've got all these Phillips head or not Phillips head. I got all these slat screwdriver fasteners undone. Now there's a little lip here on the casting at the where this um, viewing glass screws in. So I can got a copper drift here, a copper punch. Now I can uh, get that moving. Now, like I said, that seam is painted shut and it might as well be welded. So I'm going to work on um, getting this uh, to release. There is a, um, a pin right here. I guess I need to flip this over and see if I can drive that out. But I don't think it's a tapered pen. I think it's more of a, um, a locating pen. But there's another one over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know what you can see. Yeah, right here. Beep, beep. So. I have to flip this over and see if that's something I need to uh, drive out from the bottom. Okay. Okay, I suspect this crank handle is going to need to be removed. So I have a uh, one and one eighth here. I thought I had an open end one and one eighth that didn't fit. Uh, regardless. Let's tighten that. That's lefty Lucy. Okay, let's see if that yields anything. Okay, is that key going to come out? Yes, the key is going to come out easily. So that key is going to stay inside here. I'm going to keep it with the wheel. Okay, on top of the wheel. Uh, under the wheel, wherever it lands. Okay. Now I believe I should be able to pull this casting off. This item here that I thought was a pen, it is a pen, but it has nothing to do with this cover. And I can't see anything on the inside, least I be. Um, my vision obscured by uh, the gear that's laying over that area. But it appears 
It went like that. It appears that that's a, a locating pin and not a... Okay, we shouldn't have any problem. I'm going to go ahead and put this nut with the wheel in the keyway. So, you know, it's going to be a matter of uh, Gonna keep working that. Maybe get a razor blade and try to get into that seam. But that is gonna have to come off. To access the inside of that and see what that pump looks like. My neighbor called me meticulous. He hasn't seen half of you guys. And the way you guys be, I mean, I like to clean up after myself and everything, but I know other people who make me look like a slob. I just wish there were more locations where the casting overlaps like that to give me purchase. So I think this is just going to be something that, uh, the other punch I made. I like the knurled round over the hex. The hex is nice, it doesn't roll away. But even a bad neural feels good to me. Kind of puts me in mind of, uh, of vibrating a, a print from a lost uh, from sand casting. Okay, I'm going to take some time and go around that with a razor blade around that seam and see if that doesn't help me out. Uh, so, I'll bring you back if any progress is made. I'm pretty sure there was... Uh, I was thinking I was going to have to... Do some work. Let me get this flipped over. Nope, there's no damn wheel to hold on to anymore. Huh. <sighs> no. Part of me is thinking that I, I'm going to need to, uh, undo this that might just pop out of there I don't think that gear will let that pop out I would have to get rid of this gear to be able to pop that out. Oh, and if I have to go that route, I'm afraid it's not going to happen. 
How would we do that? Okay, we'd remove this rod. I don't think that rod. Yeah, they pull that rod out, and those gears would drop right out. I'm gonna try that with one of them. Uh, well, it could happen. I could push this rod all the way through and probably pluck that gear out, but we're not going to do that. Not today. Okay, I've made some accidental headway. Um, I was able to get this in the crack and drive it open a little bit. Let's flip it over because I think that's the position we're going to want to be in. Uh, and we're going to flip it on this rod. You want to keep this supports in rather close. Uh, I already have a crack in my uh, apron, in the, in the, so that's not good. Yeah, I have a. Let me pull you off this here. You can see I have a a nice opening now. And this pin isn't moving a bit. So. We're about out of battery. Let's see if we can get this cover off. Before that happens. Because that. Okay, very nice. Very nice. This is the pump. And it has got some junk in it. Around the pickup tube. Oh, yeah. Wow. Let's get some light down on top of this. Very nice pump. Something on your nose. There. Okay, so this is that. Which opening is this? Okay, that is that floating gear. And see the oblong here? That actuates this pump. As it spins around. Very nice, very sweet. The problem is here. Can you see all this? Can you see all the chips down in there? It looks like this oil line might be restricted a little bit. It's been a little tight. But you know what? I think just a good thorough cleaning in there. Yeah, this is, uh, this is horrible. It's a beautiful setup. It's horrible as far as cleanliness goes. Oh. 
Let me get this back over here. Let me see how that goes. Okay. So the collar is up, and that rides there. This is the gear from underneath. This is the one that floats here. This one comes up here. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Man, am I glad I took that apart. How revealing was that? And that gives me a picture of my endpoint. Uh, I know what I need to do for my oiler. Uh, I think just cleaning that up real good. Let me get this dog out of here. What the hell are you barking at in the garage? Was there a bug that you didn't like or something? Nothing to bark at here. Oh. Um, you know, I can see an endpoint. You know, I, uh, as far as the, the travel of the clutch cone, I think if I, uh, when I reinstall that, if I have that turned down all the way tight, Whereas the last time I reassembled it, I left it maybe a thread or two from being at home. And that may be the travel that I lost. But nonetheless, uh, if between now and then I decide to make an adjustment, I, I believe I know how to, what to adjust to uh, increase that travel. Um, So that just leaves us with the oiler. Oh. And uh, I think a thorough cleaning is going to take care of that. And everything can go back together at that point. Um, I still want to do the lead screw and the lead screw nut for the cross feed. But, uh, you know, I can get the whole machine back up and running and uh, create those items uh, using the machine. So tell a buddy, bring a friend, guys. Appreciate you liking and subscribing. And um, hopefully this is going to be helpful to somebody working on a Pratt & Whitney or, or something with a similar uh, system and um, clutch system for their uh, auto feed and their cross side feed. It is interesting just to see how, how all that stuff goes together anyway. People were thinking back then. They weren't wasting any brain cells, that's for sure. Okay, going back to my last project done on the lathe was this canister we built. And we're probably going to, uh, got the signature red stripe. We're probably going to do some kind of etched design in the top or some kind of inlay. And there's still all kinds of possibilities or something on the outside. Um, this is a two start thread. I am going to shorten that up so that this thing will suck down with maybe uh, there's a quarter, maybe one revolution. And have it sucked all the way down. All right, it takes almost three and a half turns to get this thing sucked down right now, but that's too many. I think. Uh, Right there should do it. Two turns. One, two. All right. Another look at that. What I'm thinking about for the top of this might look a little like I have an example of what it might look like. And I, uh, I don't see it. Okay. Definitely, you know, we're not talking about this design exactly, but something, you know, something along that path, something. Uh, I kind of like the, 
there's this let's say there's three different patterns here there's there's the there's the circle and then there's this larger circle overlapping and then there's the the uh, olympic rings 